According to a recent Pharonics article, the long-awaited initial experimental release of the Intel XE driver for Linux is on the horizon. This driver marks a clean slate, code-wise, for the post-Tiger Lake iGPUs and future iGPUs, such as the XE tile expected to be included on most, if not all, Meteor Lake dies, and... As a desktop Linux user with an Intel Arc card, I'm eagerly anticipating the capabilities this driver will unlock for Intel Arc discrete GPUs for Linux upon its release. Now, let's delve into the items on this list I made. If you've watched my videos, you've seen how Mango HUD's monitoring works with Intel Arc cards on Linux. I try and keep the DXVK HUD up, which is really for developer purposes, to at least see GPU utilization statistics. Right now, it's not straightforward to get this info piped through to Mango HUD. I have to install the Flatpak version of Mango HUD and switch to the sniper runtime of Steam? What? What is the sniper runtime? Oh, and install Intel GPU top? I... I... I don't have to do all of this with my 6700 XT. You know what else works with a 6700 XT or any other modern AMD GPU on Linux? Core control. But Arc doesn't work with core control either. Can the XE driver developers make sure to make an interface for other developers to hook software into and allow users to see how Arc cards run during a game and maybe allow users to at least undervolt their Arc card? I understand that undervolting isn't really possible on Windows at this time, at least at the time I'm making this video and the last time I checked, but at least have this feature available for use in future versions of the XC driver for Linux. It's my understanding that ARC drivers for Linux lack the necessary bindings for DX12 games to function with DXVK. I was eagerly anticipating trying out the demo for the new Robocop game before its release, and I had plans to make a video. However, the game failed to start on Linux with my A770. Sadly, I had to boot into Windows, where the game launched with my A770, though performance wasn't great compared to the 6700 XT on Windows. And when I switched to my 6700 XT for a Linux playthrough, the game ran quite well. Maybe things have changed since the release of the new Robocop game for Linux and Arc? I doubt it. Many newer games either fail to start on a Linux and Arc combo setup or runs poorly due to the makeshift solutions Intel used to make Arc somewhat compatible with them on Linux. Some games perform terribly. I might be working on a video about one of them. This situation is ironic considering that upon Arc's release on Windows, DX12 games were the games that worked well, while older games utilizing DX11 and below didn't. So we have lots of games that are older that we haven't optimized for. Right, so we have right. a lot of work to do there. And Intel solved that issue by having older games run through the DXVK translation layer on Windows. And DXVK was originally created for gaming on Linux. According to a May 9th, 2023 article from Pharonix, the HUC or Hook or Huck, I'll go with HUC, microcontroller utilized in the Alchemist generation of ARC chips responsible for offloading media functionality from the CPU to the GPU won't be incorporated into the new XE driver. The reason being, support for this specific HUC microcontroller already exists within the older i915 driver, and in the report, the seeming source of the article's information said writing drivers for this HUC was special and annoying. Consequently, this creates a divide. If you want to utilize an art card for encoding purposes, a common use case for models like the A380 and the A310, you'll need to resort to the older i915 drivers. Meanwhile, the XE driver will offer the latest support for, presumably, all other functionalities of the Alchemist chips. This split means that scenarios such as employing ARC in a living room HTPC, potentially utilized for gaming and handling or transcoding, 
using encoded media will at the very least require the user to switch between kernel drivers for different usage scenarios. Essentially, it implies that if you want to stream and record from your computer while gaming, you'll have to rely on the features of the i915 driver and whatever it supports for Alchemist GPUs in the future. I hope that the developers focusing on Arc support for Linux managed to allocate additional time and or resources to integrate this functionality into the XE drivers, or at least plan for such integration shortly after the XE drivers release. Let me start off by acknowledging the considerable time it took for both NVIDIA and AMD to fully embrace or even start supporting ray tracing and upsampling tech across a wide array of games that could be played on Linux. Glorious Eggroll's Proton implementations provided a workaround for utilizing FSR on Linux shortly after FSR's introduction, largely because FSR is open source. Conversely, NVIDIA's proprietary DLSS took its time to make its way to Linux. I really use one game as the bellwether to see if all these technologies have reached Linux yet, and that game is Cyberpunk 2077. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I found all of these technologies, DLSS, XESS, FSR, ray tracing, path tracing, that last one hasn't really reached Linux, has it? Anyways, these eventually get integrated into Cyberpunk. Currently, XCSS barely operates, which is sort of ironic, considering XCSS is supposed to be open source, right? Ray tracing remains unavailable. I remember being pleasantly surprised regarding Tech Power Up's benchmarks for Hogwarts Legacy. The A770 performed surprisingly well with ray tracing enabled, albeit at lower settings, surpassing cards in significantly higher tiers. An affordable card capable of tracing rays. While I'm a bit skeptical of ray tracing myself, Arc's Alchemist Generation serves as an affordable entry point for those curious about this lighting technique for games. However, as 2023 draws to a close, it appears that for the most part, ray tracing isn't really available for Linux gaming using an Arc card. Frankly, I'm uncertain whether it's the driver developers omitting something or if the game developers or Proton developers are progressing slowly in enabling ray tracing for their Linux games. Maybe there's some challenge involving an interface with the drivers and hopefully that obstacle got cleared up in the XE drivers. Wrapping up, these are my top wishes for the upcoming XE driver on Linux. I believe implementing these changes could significantly elevate the Arc user experience on Linux, positioning Arc as a strong contender against AMD's offerings. What's your take on these points? Do you agree or maybe I missed something? Continue the conversation below. I'm eager to hear your thoughts. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.